The current economic climate has created some challenging investment decisions for market players over the last year, and it's no surprise that investors are looking for alternatives to turn a profit. The so-called swagger investor is already aware of this. Well, joining me on the line to help explain just exactly what I mean is Scott Shalady, trader and CEO of Bradford Capital Management. He says silver, wine, art, gold, energy and real estate will be the ones to watch over the next three years. Uh, Scott, thanks for joining me. Um, you've used the term swagger to describe the future of successful investment. Can you tell me first of all what you mean by swagger and why you think this is the way forward for investors? Well, first of all, the, the the acronym or the abbreviation swagger is silver, wine, art, gold, energy, and real estate. Uh, and those things, those six things are what I believe to be uh, susceptible to um, inflation. And inflation is something that is going to be um, a key, a key something to focus on because of what the the Fed has announced at the last Q, QE3. And QE3 was, um, I think, uh, pretty pretty substantial because it was $40 billion in the mortgage-backed security market every month unending, or basically infinity. So we are going to have inflation at some point or the other. Uh, as long as we've got ink and paper to print on, those types of things that I just mentioned, those six things in Swagger, are going to be the beneficiaries of a, of a weaker U.S. dollar. So the one thing that the Fed has not really um, planned on is the rest of the world uh, going down the tubes as well, which has kind of slowed their inflation theory. But we're going to have inflation in the States uh, regardless, and these are the things that will probably benefit most. Now tell me more about wine, art, and real estate as realistic investment options. Uh, these areas you have to be cautious with, don't you? Well, yes, uh, <clears throat> because there, some of them are, are much more liquid than others. I mean, uh, Eric Clapton bought a painting in the year 2000 from a German artist who, by the way, is still alive. And uh, he paid $2 million for it, and I think he just sold it uh, 12 years later for $20 million. Um, that market will be very volatile, but I think that there's more and more pressure on those that do have money to find a place to put it so that they don't have um, their cash uh, eroded by inflation going forward. And that can be said the same with the wine market, but the wine market is just as illiquid or maybe even more liquid, no pun intended, um, than the art market. So uh, those things are going to be dangerous, um, but they will be used by the the folks that have the money that are looking for a place to park it. The ones that won't be as dangerous, and actually you could get a, an immediate bump, are uh, the silver and gold market. Those metals are, well, especially gold, but gold could arguably be the reserve currency of of the world because of uh, uh, perceived inaccuracies of the dollar. Now, if the dollar is not the, the lead currency of the world, um, you can, I don't know if you can argue that uh, the yuan would be, or obviously we now know that the euro probably won't pay either, but there was a big rush to be paid in other currencies than the U.S. dollar about seven years ago. Um, and I don't think that's worked out, number one, but number two, if the dollar does have some sort of huge hiccup, I don't think that we'll see a rush to any other currencies. I think you'll see a rush to gold. So gold and silver are going to be also, but also those are traded in dollar-denominated um, uh, contracts, so those things will be also boosted because of the inflation to the dollar. It'll take more dollars to buy the same amount of gold. So uh, those, that's another way to, uh, quote-unquote, insulate yourself against uh, an eroding U.S. dollar or an inflationary U.S. dollar. Uh, so those those two things are good examples of both ends of the spectrum of something that is going to be very illiquid, but you can see great gains. There are also some great losses if you've got bad timing, or something that's going to be a little bit more, or a lot more liquid and you can get in and out of. Now, you mentioned gold and silver there. Do you think the precious metals will be the main focus for the swagger investor going forward compared to, say, wine or art, which usually takes a lot longer to turn a profit? Yeah, the wine and the, the, wine and the art, are, those are 10-year or 15-year, um, uh, you know, expected returns. Or Yes, you're right. The gold and silver market, you're going to get quarterly returns. As well as, you know, land is not as liquid, but it's still fairly liquid. And I think that... Um, if you want to look at just raw land, uh, there's less and less of it here, for instance, in the States, and you're, a lot of that land is also income-producing, so that's going to be a good investment. But at the same time, we've seen our housing market here get absolutely slaughtered over the last 
five years or maybe five or six years and I think that we've come close to if not already hit a low in in the uh, the, the decline in housing and that is also probably going to be um, one of the best investments if that's what you're thinking of doing over the next five years because a single family home in the U.S. and this is something I mean that even Warren Buffett's commented on at this point in time especially with what rates are doing as far as rents go could possibly be the best investment that any average person could do with any extra money at the, you know right now. So I think that the real estate market is going to give you a decent return. Some types of real estate are going to give you a quicker return than others, but if you go to raw land all the way down to a single family home, that absolutely looks to me to be a good place to put your money. And also, this is one of the few times we actually actually should listen to the US government because our federal service said that they're going to be paying 40 billion dollars uh, monthly in the mortgage-backed securities market. So um, that will help keep your rates low and it will give you um, some fuel to, to your fire about having that return come sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today, Scott, and taking some time away from the trading floor in Chicago to speak to me. That's all we've got time for. Until next time on Dukas Copy TV, have a good day. Goodbye.